Happy Tuesday, everybody. Is it the last Tuesday of the month or is next? No, we have one more. We have one more Tuesday yes. in 2022. Oh my goodness, what a whoa yes. that was. This is Christmas week. This is Christmas week. I'm Patty. I'm Carrie. And we are Studio R12 Stencils, and we are here today to answer your questions. Yes, we asked for your questions as we are kind of winding down on the year. Mm -hmm. We are getting out of painting for Christmas because... It's too early late for, that. for one, it's yeah. too late for the other, and we were just like, okay, let's just answer let's questions. Let's see what, yeah. yes. So yeah. we are doing that today. Um, we do have a really fun live plan for you next Tuesday. You're going to love it. Yeah, we're yeah. going to um, show you some of our favorite things. Um, These are a few of our favorite things. A few things. of our favorite things, As yes. my head breaks out in song. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It'll be in there all day. Yeah. Um, last <laughs> week, if you are not subscribed to our YouTube channel, please, 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 please do that. We have some yeah. amazing videos hundreds of videos for you lots of playlists too mm -hmm. so if you are struggling some of our questions we had um one one wonderful lady was um saying that she's still struggling with bleeding under we have covered this topic mm -hmm. like super thoroughly and so you can go and review those videos yeah. and get exactly the nugget that you're looking for and they're all organized by category of things so if you need help we are here for you. Yes, and we yeah. make new playlists. I think I've made three new playlists just in the last week. So mm -hmm. we're constantly making, oh, we have enough for playlists for this now, or we've yeah. covered this three or four times, so let's go ahead and make a playlist. So. Yeah, so you can just really dive in. Yes. Sometimes it's not enough. So like when I'm, I've been um, struggling this year, and if any of you have any resources for me, I've been struggling to do um, sourdough bread using the starter and all of that. And I have started and stopped four times. Yes. I have bought five books. I have watched hundreds of hours of YouTube <laughs> videos. And for whatever reason, it just escapes me as like a system. And so, but having the, U, the, the YouTube video people that have many different versions of, like if it doesn't work this way, come at it this way. That's what we try to do yeah, for you. Exactly. You know, is give you multiple levels of entry points so that you feel mm -hmm. like the subject is covered. Agreed. Yeah. Um, last week on our YouTube channel, we covered the Patty's top tools for stenciling. So if you were on a deserted mm -hmm. island and needed, and you could only take three stencil tools, we showed what those were. And then this week. This is super cool, guys. We're painting on fabric. Okay, so ready? So this is super cool bag, Hobby Lobby bag, and you can see that it's iridescent, mm -hmm. and um, that is done with some cool techniques. I'm not yeah. going to spill my guts. No, on don't this. tell. Don't tell. I'm yet. not telling. You got to watch it. It's um, a really cool technique. It is a cool technique, and we are releasing this video on Saturday, so it will be there for you on Christmas Eve, anytime yeah. throughout the weekend. If you have a few minutes just to kick up your feet and take a break, then we the will have the quiet before the the call yeah. before the before the storm. <laughs> or maybe, blah, or maybe, blah, blah. maybe you want to hold on to it until after, yeah, so yeah, that yeah. you have something to look forward to. Yeah, while all the kids are you know playing the thing, or you've got the turkey in the oven. You know, I forget. So we don't do a big mad thing anymore because um, I'm the mother of sons. So we tend to go to where the daughter in laws are, and um, and so you know, I think I'm cooking some lamb chops and chilling by the tree. So it's gonna be really calm. So for me, a video on my favorite subject would be perfect because yeah, yeah, I'd have too. chill time. Me too. The days before and after would not be so chill time. Right. Yeah, so yeah, <laughs> that's a scheduling nightmare, right? Um, we also have a fun sale going on today. <laughs> so every now and then we end up with um, oh. an abundance of stencils and it's normally something a very random a random collection yeah. i think this time we have more than 20 different designs and you have home decor we have um holiday and seasonal things we have lots of patterns and in select sizes we have extra so we have made a five dollar sale oh nice and like 74 percent off a couple of these yeah, yeah, like yeah. they're ranging from like 37 to 74 percent off because these are big stencils and they are good sizes and yeah. you know it's not just a tiny sometimes you know we like you can we do really tiny score ones, but on, absolutely yeah. um, this is a this is a big deal and you're going to really score 
if you make sure you buy several of them so they can be shipped together. Exactly. And we don't um, we don't have a whole lot. Um, I think that the most we had of any one stencil was 20. And so once that runs out, yeah. then it gets pulled off the yeah, it, sale page. We have an inventory on it, mm -hmm. so it's just going to be like gone. Yep. So, so it'll I will... disappear. So get it while before yes. the crazy... Yes, yes, this yes. Weekend. And I will go ahead and share that link with you guys and then we can get started. So for this week, we asked you guys to send us questions. I went live last week and pleaded with you um, and we had dozens of questions. We aren't going to be able to get to everything today. There are were several questions around um, some different themes specifically from a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So those are things that we need, we know we need to touch on in the future with can, you guys. Can I hop in though yeah. and say, you guys, please give Carrie like a ton of hearts, hugs, like high fives, whatever emojis and stuff you can get because this girl right here rocks the Casbah and she has made a spreadsheet of all the things <laughs> and she has cross-referenced it with playlists and she has done all, like she is a mental genius and um, she needs all the love that you guys can give her. You guys. She's amazing. I appreciate that. You have no idea. No <laughs> we idea. We were just talking. Um, <clears throat> I was just referred to before we started today as the fisherman because I am constantly reeling, reeling everybody, everybody back, back in. You know, Patty, come back to earth. You know, so like if you see me floating in in the in the <laughs> outer space, Carrie will have like a little I got your tether. Me. Yeah, I'm pulling your tether pulling back down to the now. Spaceship. Come on back down to earth. So yeah, and that's such a needed needed yeah. thing. Yeah. I'm happy to help. All right, <laughs> so let's talk about stencils. And I do have a giveaway for today. Mm -hmm. So part of my live last week asking for questions for from you guys was that um, we were gonna give away a dome brush set. So um, I did a random a random number yeah, and cool, cool. we have it that to announce, but I'm gonna wait until we ask our question. Okay. All let's right, do so it. our first let's question, um, and this was the very first question asked. Can you stencil over Krylon finish later? I need to protect the other side of my yep. tall Christmas porch sign, but I want to paint on it later. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so what you can do, um, this is the Krylon matte finish that we use in a spray. I'm presuming that's what they're talking yeah, about. So. Yeah, and so this is really good for if you've used marker. Um, I don't know if you've seen the people that paint the signs and then they use marker to um, accent and highlight mm -hmm. and stuff like that. If you use a brush on burnish, that's gonna make all of your marker disappear. So you would spray it with the Krylon, and yes, you can absolutely paint over it later. So you can come back to it in two years, add some extra embellishments if you want to, paint back over the top of it, varnish over the top of it. This is like almost, I don't know how it works, but I have painted with this product for at least 30 years, and it is like a neutral thing. It doesn't seem to react or respond to anything negatively in my experience so i know i haven't done everything but that is a true a true moment a true. in my book so okay and so this is we're going to stay on the krylon okay. for a second here kathy asked do you varnish a project before or after glitter if mm -hmm. you varnish it after does it dull the sparkle of the glitter okay so this is also a great product to use to go over chunky things so for instance um, I've got little snowflakes here with some glitter on top of them. If I was going to put this outside and I had, say, my glue or my paint holding my glitter, this is going to provide some security to my glitter and it's going to make the glitter stay stuck, which is a really good thing. It's going to protect it as well. And so you would spray, um, you, would, you could varnish first and then glue on your embellishments that have been sprayed, if that makes sense. Or you could just spray the whole thing after you varnish on everything, so, um, or after you um, paint everything. So, I hope that answers that question. Yes, okay, our next question is from <coughs> Kim, and Kim said, is there a paint that you recommend over another? Okay, so yes, and that is an interesting question. Um, this actually leads into another question that we're going to go into mm -hmm. next. Um, we use two kinds of paints here, um, and it's, Probably more than anything, um, just because of training, um, accessibility to the products and stuff like that. So I started out painting with Delta paints. I don't believe, is Delta, I don't think, you guys can answer this if you know the answer. I don't know that they're a thing anymore. I, um, I did run across a Delta, um, maybe it was a, an ad, adhesion, some kind of 
yeah, something maybe on they, Amazon the other maybe day. Maybe they've moved into a different part of the craft world. But um, anyway, but then Delta started doing a lot of discontinuing of paints and things like that. So I moved over into deco art. And that has been at least 20 years from ago. Um, and so for a long time, I used only deco art paints. And then we moved into having a um, retail shop here in Gallipolis. And I needed bulk paint. And so then we were painting so many samples and then we started doing videos and that's just the same we we paint in such volume that we need these great big giant jars because if i was going to use number 18 to paint a tall porch sign which i use this color for almost all um i'm going to use 87 jars of yes. deco art paint to make that happen and in this case i would use like a quarter of mm -hmm. the jar to cover the whole thing so we don't fill these very often but so what we use for those is we use the Sherwin Williams sample. Um, we really it's a to go. Um, yeah, the, the would to you, go. Dustin, there's a couple out on that um, on the shelf. Would you care to grab one, please? Yeah. So anyway, so the the little to go um, are pre mixed. I think they say they're satin, but if you look at this porch sign back here, that is not satin. Yeah. Um, it has not got a sheen to it at all. Sorry about the rest of my cold. It's almost done. Um, anyway. But so what we did is we made a comparison chart um, for, this is a giant sticker. Both of these are stickers. And they show the number of the 80 something paints that we use. It tells you what color they Thank are you. in deco art and it tells you what color they are in the Sherwin Williams. And this is the um, color snap. Yeah. And um, this is, it just comes in this little size jar. Mm -hmm. You can shake it up really easily. They store really well. If you are crafting in bulk, um, then you want to know about this and you want to get your main colors in this. And that is going to make such a big difference for the cost of things. These are very affordable. Um, anyway, but this shows, sorry, um, your paints in the warm colors and the cool colors. It shows them and tells you what their value is so that you can make design decisions. This is a really exceptional tool for deco art paints and the Sherwin Williams paints and it compares them both so you know which one you have. And it's also a really nice thing. Take a picture of that with your phone mm -hmm. and then you can take that to the craft store or to the Sherwin Williams store and you have your numbers yeah. and you're ready to order what you need so you can get crafting. Um, I actually, you were talking about our little store in downtown Gap Police and you guys, we have a really cool thing that's happening in our oh, town it's tomorrow. Oh, so cool! So um, we have talked on here before about how magical our little town is at that's Christmas. Amazing. Uh, we have this really wonderful group of people who light up our entire park. We're talking an entire city block. Yeah. And it is amazing. It's like a big city block. Yes. Too. Like it's it's big, big. It's big. Yeah. And tomorrow we are going to be on the Today Show. Yeah. So our whole town. Yeah. They're sending their crew mm -hmm. to our town tomorrow morning, 5 o'clock. Um, if you guys check it out, go watch the Today Show tomorrow. Yeah, and we now we don't know what time we're going to be on, yeah, yeah. but we are going to be there bright and early. It's the um, <laughs> merriest Main Street is mm -hmm. the theme. And what I love about this, we are Gallup Police, Ohio, and shout out to us, like give us some hugs and some hearts because this is a big deal. <laughs> this is a big deal. Um, like two weeks ago, I believe it was Park City, Utah, which is a huge, mm -hmm. I used to live in Utah. And I mean, Park City is like where the Olympics were. Yeah. You know, and so we are Gallup Police, Ohio, and we're where they mine coal. You yeah. know what I mean? It's like, this is not, this is not something that you just fall off the turnip truck and land into, yeah. but our park is gorgeous. Um, they have been working on it for 10 years. This mm -hmm. is our 10th anniversary. And so, oh my God, it's yes. just such a so good So you'll have so, to tune in and get a little, a little sneak peek of our tiny little absolutely. fun town. Yeah, it is, it is beautiful. And we are a merry little, we're a little Hallmark town, guys. Yeah, it's we fun. really are. Okay, next question. We got, go into we got the paint. Yep. So, under. Yes, yeah, so our next question is um, <coughs> from Pat. And I knew as soon I knew as soon as I had to announce a name with this like the random generator that I was gonna get one. And we've we've talked about Pat's last name before. Annunziato, I think, is how we decided to say it. Oh my gosh, good it. job. <laughs> I've been practicing Pat, so I hope that is right. Um, but Pat is going to be the winner of our dome brush set Love for it. asking a question before our live. So I'll get with you and get your address. Pat's question is, I'm still having problems stenciling. They bleed through no matter what I do. Would Mod Podge help? Okay, so that is a really interesting question. And one of the answers to that question is, 
what kind of paint are you using? Mm -hmm. um, there are some brands, and I'm not even going to name because that's not cool, um, but there are some brands of paint that are more water than they are pigment and more water than, it's just, they're terrible things. Um, they just don't, they don't paint well. Um, if you're kids and you want to have a little craft moment, maybe, but if you're trying to actually achieve something pretty, you need to have some pigment in your paint. You mm -hmm. know, this is a big deal. So make sure that you're getting a quality paint. Um, and that's number one. Um, a lot of people that use the Mod Podge technique are using it with the vinyl. And the vinyl, when you apply paint or water to the vinyl, when you press it on, it can wrinkle and bubble. And the Mod Podge acts as a sealer around your edges. So that is a very good technique. It also works really good with tape. Um, I haven't had to use it on our stencils because our stencils don't bleed under if you're doing the second best thing. So you have to have paint that is not um, paint that is not wet, okay? So you don't want more water than paint. You have to have a brush that is shaped correctly. Um, we were talking before we got on live here today um, that the flat top brushes do not do stenciling. I don't know why they're stencil brushes. I have no idea they're horrible things. Um, so you want something that is dome and you want something that's super, super dense. Um, where were you? I was looking at a brush. Hang on. Top carry for a second. Okay. Uh, I will find it. <laughs> talk for it's, a second. It's here. I don't have to. I didn't pull talking points. Oh, no. I only okay. have questions. So the, um, the big, fat, fluffy one that we have for stippling in snow. Yeah, duster sippler. I thought there was one laying right here. Anyway, those are super, super not tight. They're super like, they make such great snow. You would not believe how good it is. But it would do a horrible job at stenciling or stippling. Thank you, guys. I swear there's one back here somewhere. I don't know where. Anyway, but so like, look at how, ignore the little things. This just flops everywhere. So you can see that if I push on this, it's just going to shove straight under my stencil if I really push. Okay, so we don't want that. So I'm going to show you this and just wanted to give a shout out to um, Dustin, actually. He designs a lot of these little flat pack pieces. If I take this off, these are all going to fall because they're not glued together yet. Um, they did not fall. Um, but these are, that's a tissue cover. And so these are so nice because you they're affordable mm -hmm. and um, super easy for shipping. And then you just glue the edges together and they just make a lovely, lovely, lovely um, tissue cover. We've got trays. We've got all kinds of things like that. Anyway, I want to show you real quick. This is the most important thing. Dry brush, dry paint, meaning not a lot of water in your paint. And you want to have a dry paper towel. And then you're going to wipe off the excess. Let's go. What is it? Over here. Okay. And so I'm just going to use this word stencil and I'm going to go gourmet right in the middle there. Use a little piece of tape. Somewhere. All right. Use glasses. Ah, the brand new roll. It has a straight across line there. This is our stretchy tape. And now what do I do here? Um, I don't have a good spot to tape this because I'm going right in the middle. I can tape right there at the top where I have a little lip and then I can tape through the bigger word and press down through that word. So sometimes you don't have a good place to tape and that is good to know. Okay, so I'm gonna use my paint, black paint. I'm going to, Ew. lots of, goobers there there put out a little bit of black paint it's dry it's shook up and my dry brush I'm gonna pick up a little bit of my black paint and then I'm going to offload okay so if you're heavy-handed um so I'm suspecting that if you are struggling with bleeding under you can be a couple of things happening it's going to be your paint has got water in it it's going to be that you're loading a lot. I'm a heavy handed painter. And so if I pick up and scoop a ton, I'm going to have a ton of paint in my brush and that's going to seep under. So it's way better to have dusty. So I would suggest practicing making the dustiest looking application that you can 
So what that would look like, I'm gonna really wipe this off because I mega loaded it. And then I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna use really light pressure as well. Okay, so I'm just gonna take a swirl and I'm gonna practice. I'm trying so hard to make this be so dusty. And then what you can do is later, once you've worn off some of that paint, you can come back, it'll already be dry, and you can push a little harder. And so you start off so dusty, you basically can't even make a mark on my hand, okay? And then you can start pushing a little harder, and then you can push a little harder, and then you can go a little harder, and you can see how that tracks, okay? So it starts going very light to very just heavier, and so it's all about that pressure. Okay, so I'll just go across that word, trying to be dusty, and I'll lift this up so you can see it. Okay, so that's super dusty, super not strong lettering, right? But it's my first coat. I'll drop that back down, tape it again, and then I'll just, with the same load, I'm not even gonna reload. I'm gonna go again, and I'm just gonna do this G and show you the difference that that'll make. So let's take a peek and see how much stronger that is. So you don't have to get there all in the first thing versus if I went here and then I went here and started doing this, I don't know if this will bleed under. I kind of can be bad at bleeding under. Okay, it didn't really, it did a teeny bit right there on the M. But I didn't spend any time wiping off. I didn't, I just chunked right into the paint and chunked right onto there. So that's what you don't want to do. You just want to approach it a little bit gently. Gentler, gentlier. Gentlier. Gentler. Mm -hmm. Gentler. Like antler. Okay, so this one is one that I can answer, and it's from Brenda. And Brenda asked, what is our most popular large porch sign stencil? Ooh. Do you have a guess? Can I guess? You guess. Do you have a guess? Oh. I didn't get I didn't give her a chance to think about uh, it. Merry Christmas. No. <clears throat> Dustin or Steve, do you have a guess? Uh, the skeleton. The skeleton, Steve gets it, um, and we don't have it here because because it sells. It sells um, as soon as we get one painted. We have to send it over to our boutique to because yeah. Yeah, it yeah. is it's a top seller there. And then the stencil. Is. If you guys get a chance to come into Gallup Place, if you're driving through the area and you want to pop in, now we're not going to be there. Like we we work in a different building, mm -hmm. but um, but. We've got the entire upper echelon of a ballroom size room full of painted samples um, for, for being inspired and such a beautiful boutique as well. It's amazing. Yeah, it is. I'm just a little proud. A little proud. Okay, we had a couple of questions. Um, D Denise and Carol both asked, how do you seal your outdoor projects? Okay, so that is a really good question. And my favorite outdoor sealer is gonna be DuraClear Matte Varnish. And for whatever reason, I haven't gone to a different polyurethane um, because this has worked so well for me. And like this doesn't do the same thing like the paint does. I don't use it up. I tend to, I'm all about this corner today. <laughs> okay, I tend to like to use an applicator like this. Um, if I use a um, roller with the foam roller on it, the roller sucks up a lot, but what I do with this one is I get into water, I squeeze it all out, and I'll even press between two paper towels. I put my varnish out, dip, 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 and then the water helps it smooth on, so I'm getting such a smooth, thin coat. Mm -hmm. It's not like all wadding up in my sponge, and these are amazing applicators because there's no square edges on them. Um, they're awesome, so I use this. All right, Patty <coughs> asked, we have a lot of pats and yeah, patties today. We have lots of pats and patties. Patty asked it's a cool if name. we have some ideas for hanging the boards when both sides are stenciled. Okay, so yeah, we pulled one, um, well actually two of them. Um, one of our favorite ways to do this is with the string and you just drill two holes and um, then you can flip it around and you can hang it and show it the other way. Mm -hmm. Even if you have embellishments on the other side, that doesn't really matter. If you want to be clever with this, you can take command strips to put your embellishments on, pop those off, and then put them in storage and stuff. Um, we did the same thing with this guy. So if, <coughs> excuse me, if you have embellishments that are gonna hang out the top or the edges, then you might wanna think about having your embellishment lower down. 
so that it doesn't show when you flip it over because this would be a super cool um, project for another season. Um, and so you want to be careful of that. Okay. <clears throat> Julie asked, for base coating, do you prefer a large brush, foam brush, or roller? Which one is smoother? Um, smoother. Okay, that's an interesting question. Um, I want to say probably the poly foam brush for smoothest. Once again, going into the same thing as loading your dome brush, um, you will have just a little bit of paint on the end of it, and you can really smear that paint. Let me show you real quick. I don't know that black will show. Black, well, it'll show. Okay, so I'm gonna go right over the top of our gourmet, and I do wanna show, okay, so, Carrie has especially talked about this in her um, filming. This is a little hard edge that has gotten dry because maybe it floated up in the water basin. And you've also seen that maybe your brush hygiene sometimes could be like a little bit better because we'll forget we go to lunch right after now and then we'll forget and maybe not film for a couple of days. That brush, this has got hard crusties all the way across that. <clears throat> You'll frequently see me standing here with my foam brush just picking the ends off. Um, and you will see in a second that that is um, acceptable practice. But yeah, if you get a bunch of crusties, if you get crusties on the edges here, it's kind of like time to throw that brush away. But um, if I can get the hard crusties off, about there, then I can load my brush. <clears throat> and then instead of just loading and like putting a big old dippy looking thing right there, I don't know if you can catch how smeary that is. What I'm going to do is I'm going to really wipe it out and stretch it. Okay, so you don't want to try to get there all in one base coat. And pretend that you got a little bit of excess on there. You can take just your paper towel and you can go right back over the top of that. <clears throat> this is probably the tip that will be worth everything on this video right here is you can take that and you can take it totally down to smooth let that dry don't load more paint and then go back in with the second coat to finish your base coat i like that all right um michelle asked how to select the right type thickness of and what what the right type and thickness of board when you're starting a project well, it's going to depend on your need. Mm -hmm. um, you, so if you're giving a gift, this is the gift season. <clears throat> if you're giving a gift, then you have to think about where this is going to be. If the person is getting a gift from you that is a tall porch sign or a thing for their porch and they have two inches of space, obviously you have some thinking to do. Like yeah. it might need to go on their door and you might need to provide a hanger, um, you know, that kind of thing. You might need to do some thinking about that. If you're putting it in, like in my house, I have a really big, it's um, this big, and I swap it out with another one the same size that goes on my dining room wall. And actually right now, I'm thinking I need one about like 18 times bigger to take up the whole darn wall. Um, but if you have the space for it, you have to decide if you're gonna put things around it or with it. If you're going to, if you've got house plants or you know any of that stuff, so well, it just, Depends on where you're going to put it. And a lot of times um, the stencil and the design can help you make that decision too. Now mm -hmm. we offer sometimes 12 All to 15, things. 12 to 15 sizes. So that might not help, yeah. but depending on which stencil and design yeah. that can Yeah. Help and your decision. stencil, um, this is mm -hmm. something that we're going to talk about here in a hot second. Um, this is one that Carrie did. Um, this stencil is not the size of this board. This board is the size of the place that you're going to put the board. Like you might have a perfect little coffee bar with like a little um, cup holder that goes down or something like that. So, you know, you're going to put this with something else. Um, but this stencil can be within the, the scope of a different size board. So it just really is a creative process. Yeah. Almost choosing is more creative than even painting it sometimes. We're gonna come back to that. Um, I have, we have, guys, we have so many questions. We are definitely not gonna get to them all yeah. today. We 
have talked, Steve and I had a conversation about maybe doing some um, YouTube shorts with mm -hmm. some of these questions yeah, for you idea. guys so that we do have them on video and that you can watch them anytime. We will also go back and be answering some questions. If we don't get to your question, it's probably likely that we are it's going to come back to it. Yeah. We're going to come back to it later. Um, we had our friend Patty said, Everybody's name Everybody's is Patty name today. Is Patty. Our friend Patty <clears throat> said that um, she bought the Liquitex gel matte medium, which is um, the modeling paste. The modeling paste, mm -hmm. but she couldn't remember why she bought it. So uh, we pulled some projects to show her. Super fun. Okay, so the Liquitex modeling paste is super thick and chunky. Okay, and so it's super thick and chunky mm -hmm. okay so it is just gonna stay where you put it yes okay so <clears throat> what you do with this is a couple of things there's so many cool and fun ways to use this i'm going to put this back over here and we do have several videos on this so if you see any of the projects mm -hmm. here all the three projects that she's going to show have videos for them yeah. so this is a modeling paste video using a um, brick Mm -hmm. stencil in the background so Carrie did this and she did all over bricks and then let it dry and then you can put your other stencil on top of it and then you can make like a totally like textured background mm -hmm. super fun technique and you could um, distress this or antique it to give it like a little bit of dimension if you wanted to and um, just an amazingly modern perfect wonderful boho coffee house yes. moment yes. I love it <clears throat> and then this guy right here is got texture paste up here on the top and that is going to make it look snowy and like textury like the the white part of the mitten the yeah fuzzy yeah part. like yeah. your little furry cuff and stuff like that so that's a super fun one and then this is great coming into the um any holiday really um we got books from the dollar store mm -hmm. i think it was dollar, dollar. tree mm -hmm. <coughs> excuse me and um then what who cares what the is inside the book? We just needed a stack of books. They were a dollar. This was before it's the dollar twenty-five store, and um, yeah, go figure, right? That's a lot of inflation. That's that's a big number right there. Anyway, um, so we just painted the books. Um, if they needed painting, you could paint over them. I think these were white, mm -hmm. and then you just texture the the ends, and then use your stencil words. Go over the top, tie a ribbon, and you've got this beautiful little thing that you can set out for the holidays. And then you can do all the different holidays. Yeah, and it's then you amazing. can even add paint color into it. We've done that before. You can paint over top of it. Mm -hmm. On the, we, I did a growth chart, and we did most of the growth chart. Mm -hmm. It's that the pink one right there. Yeah. We we stenciled it with the stencil, but then at the end we went to the flowers that are on there, and we oh. just did the modeling paste on the flowers. So that it and just, so they're, yeah, they're raised and they just look gave them super a little cool. bit. Yeah. It gives it a dimension. Mm -hmm. And by the way, you guys, if you are doing a present, so a board, Dustin, you know what dimensional lumber is doing for like this size, what the cost is like today, 2022. Between 10 to $20. Yeah. So you're 10 to $20, right? You get your stencil for growth chart and you make that present for that mom, mm -hmm. you're going to walk into that bridal shower, the bridal shower. Let's not jump the gun here. <laughs> We're going to walk into the baby shower <laughs> and you are going to just take the show. People are going to be like, what? This is amazing. Mm -hmm. So yeah, these are momentous gifts that you can give that will take that child from zero to you know 18 years old and we still measure our kids when they come to visit like it's stupid oh yeah yeah and like they measure me because like i have not shrunk believe it or not and um they keep contesting me about this and i'm like i have not um so but yeah it's just fun to see where everybody's at and then to show you know 30 year old joe compared to you know 70 year old dad yeah. and it's just a really fun ha ha moment and to have it recorded right here on your board makes it amazing. amazing agreed all right i think we have one more question that we're going to do today and this is going to come back into our discussion about the the design and picking and choosing yes um vicky asked 
Do you pick the base stencil or colors first when deciding on what to make? There are so many choices that can put me in a maker's funk of too many decisions, leaving me sitting and not doing a dang thing with so many great items. So true. Yes. Yes, um, we struggle with that every day. Um, I cannot, cannot argue enough for getting onto Pinterest mm -hmm. and searching for the feeling more than the word that you're doing. So like if you wanted to search for like this fresh brewed coffee served daily, I wouldn't search for those words. I would search for coffee station or coffee bar. And I would go and look for colors and I would almost just scroll through looking to catch the feel. The feel is what you're after. And then, because you're gonna know if it's your feel, and you're gonna know if it's your vibe. And so, like, it, I don't have blue anything in my house. I could never use this like this, and I might get stuck on having a brick stencil and having um, a blue and white sign in my house that has none of the cool colors and, but if I saw this in maybe a rich brick tone with a black on top of it, it might hit my button and I might be like so inspired, like I'm gonna go run and find all the pieces that I need to do that. So go looking for feelings first. And the minute you find the feelings, and that's one of these, we'll circle back around to this. One of the reasons this is so helpful is you can take your feeling picture and you can be like, what makes me feel good? The brick makes me feel good. Well, what color is the brick? Oh, it's mainly this color and this color. Now you have a story place to start and you can be like, well, maybe I don't have a brick stencil, but maybe if I do my background in that color, then I can put that black word on top of that and it's gonna look beautiful, just like the feeling picture yeah. that I had. So I would search for feelings first and look for people who have captured the essence of the room that you want to like mentally live in you yeah. know so i hope that That's that good. have yeah. some feelings it does yeah. yeah yep well i think we're gonna wrap up for today and we wanted to say um a big thank you i'm gonna come over here and we'll be on the same little camera um merry christmas yes um from us to you guys i'm gonna cry yeah, me too <laughs> <laughs> we love y'all